So I keep talking about presence. So what is it? It's, um, it's a very traditional um, image of a sense of clear, quiet, calm, uh, like the moon reflected in the water. So just allow that. Just clear. Present, awake, some quality of knowing. Like the moon reflected in the water. And just allow yourself to feel what's happened in the room. So rather than being, thank you, thank you very much, rather than being an experience where you withdraw from reality or where you separate or cut yourself off, which sometimes people think of meditation that way, mindfulness practices actually bring you more fully into the world. They open your senses, and when they open the senses, they allow you to connect directly and fully, somatically, as Ron said this morning or wholeheartedly would be another way to say it. Um, so that your ability to be present in a hurried environment, or your ability to be present in chaotic situations, or your ability to hold high, intense internal reactivity increases. Because you're actually learning and practicing how to stay. So I have a children, if any of you have read her books on mindfulness, she says learning to practice mindfulness is like training the puppy dog. You know, first you make friends with the puppy dog and you kind of got that, you know, smiley, smiley, kind of the tail, and, uh, and then once you've got the connection and the sense of uh, energetic feel for each other and the dog looks at you, looks your face, whatever. You have some responsive loop, an open loop going between the two of you. Then you teach the dog to stay. Sit and stay. So first it's connect, sit, stay. If you start with stay, you just get a, a, a more excited, more revved up little puppy dog. If you start with come, then there's some willingness or openness or invitation that's in the connectivity. What we often have done with our kids is to start with stay. I asked you to sit down and be quiet. Now do that. You just stay there. Yeah. So you think about all the kids we have who are suffering you know, with hyperactivity, irritability, depression. What they actually really want to hear is that invitation, which is what Dr. Neufeld's been talking about. They want the invitation to actually appear in my presence, in my eyes. And they want the eyes that look at them to be eyes that are non-judgmental. So they actually want to be seen by eyes of loving kindness. Not the, <clears throat> that's it. And it doesn't matter if it's the hard to reach teenagers on the street. The kids who are homeless, they want the same thing as the three-year-old in the kindergarten class. And actually, it's the same thing I want. You know, when you look at me, I actually want you to look at me with eyes of loving kindness rather than judgmentally. If I had a choice, I'm going to do whatever I can to get you to smile at me and connect and relate. So we're all simple in that way. We're all human in that way. And if you actually are willing to be there with yourself that way, then you can be there for anybody in that way, regardless of what experience they've had. 